What is France's top 14 competition doing that other leagues aren't? I've done some digging and it'll take me a little while to explain, but the results are pretty clear. One of the most dominant national sides in history, under 20 world champions and a thriving domestic competition, and a crazy amount of money. Seriously, their domestic competition recorded 515 million euros in operating income last financial year. I'm going to be completely honest here, I had no idea what operating income meant in business terms, but apparently it's the profit you make once you take out all the expenses, all the taxes. Keep in mind too, this is only money made from their domestic league, not the French national side, not the Rugby World Cup, absolutely shitting on every other competition. I managed to narrow it down to three big reasons for their success. The first one being their competition structure, or should I say competitions. While yes, the top 14 is one of the oldest rugby competitions getting around, starting back in 1892 with just two teams at the time, it's their promotion and relegation system that's been absolute gold for growing the game. It's the same competition structure that the English Premier League follows that's led them to dominate the soccer world. Because every single game means something. There's always something to play for. The teams at the bottom of the ladder aren't just playing to avoid a wooden spoon. They're playing to keep themselves in the premier competition and therefore in the spotlight. Typically, you'd need two leagues to pull off a promotion relegation system, a task that's been practically impossible for most leagues around the world. But in France, they have the top 14 for their premier division, the D2 for their second division, and lately, they've been adding pretty much another division every year. At the moment, it has seven tiers of promotion and relegation. And while I can't read French, the rough numbers are 226 amateur and around 40 professional clubs participate in this system. That's, act that's actually amazing because every club that participates has a dream of winning the top 14 one day. All the coaches, all the players, all those weekend volunteers have this dream of getting their club to the number one team in France and it's genuinely possible over time. This is where I feel so many countries have gone wrong with that connection between their club sides and the professional teams. The club sides are just scouting grounds for the professional team and there's actually no ambition or no big pathway for clubs to strive for. Which is fine for just plodding along, but when you try to create that level of competition in between the two, rarely is it sustainable. Due to the third commitment rule. I'm not a businessman, I just made that up. I thought it sounded good though. But the sweet spot for me really is people being involved with their club and supporting a professional team. If you try to get people to do any more than that, it really is a hard sell. Australia's never gotten a second tier competition off the ground. New Zealand's NPC is set for a shake up after being deemed unsustainable with interest fading. South Africa's Curry Cup has just been restructured into a promotion relegation system that will include the URC sides. England's Premiership Rugby's always followed promotion relegation, but the issues it's facing has been really poor governance. I'll do a different video on this to avoid getting down the rabbit hole, but my main message from France's structure is they found a way to make every club a part of the bigger picture, and it's freaking awesome. The second thing they do is market the game extremely well. It sounds so simple, but for some reason, it just isn't. One of the most important parts of French rugby, the spectacle. More enjoyable than the last 30 seconds of your favorite adult film. The average crowd attendance is only around 14,000, and every stadium is absolutely packed. It makes a huge difference to the overall product compared to 14,000 people in an empty stadium. The crowd sounds louder, the drama's more intense, and the TV broadcasting deals, ooh baby they're generous. They make sure every fan truly gets their tickets worth too. A couple of curtain raiser games and affordable food and drink. Not sure what it's like where you live, but in Australia they're taxing $8 onto every beer. It's their players are frequently involved in brand deals, sponsorship, TV endorsements. I mean, I love this. Sebastian Chabal in a fairy outfit. Bloody marvellous. The clubs have really strong links to local businesses and have worked really hard to build that sense of community. Sure, they have a few sugar daddies getting around, don't we all? It also makes it pretty easy to market your league when you have 22.9% of players from the Rugby World Cup based in France. Can't speak for everyone, but I love tuning in and watching how some Aussies are going in overseas competitions. It just brings in international attention and who wouldn't want to sponsor this? But what I really respect the most is they've never been afraid to take a risk. Signing some of the best players from right around the world and putting together some of the dreamiest combinations you could think of. <laughs> Sorry, that looks so sus. Look, it's mainly Toulon, but every player they bring in from overseas 
just suddenly brings more eyes, more attention to their league, and it's just been great decision making along the way. And the final thing they've implemented is the GIF rule. GIFs are mostly French players that basically have gone through the junior development pathways in France. Their domestic league was never purely about becoming the number one side in international rugby, because they figured regularly playing with and against world-class players was the best prep their players could get. What's interesting though is as the league's grown stronger, they've ramped up the number of GIFs that needs to be in each squad. And there's a few reasons for this, but it might be a bit different to what you think. Well, yes, it builds depth and has more youngsters exposed to a high level of rugby. It was the reliance on overseas players that had a detrimental effect on the quality of coaching in France. Think about it, if a coach went on to sign a world-class player who already knew everything, they didn't need to teach them anything, especially when they were making up the entire spine of certain sides. France definitely went hard. Harder than that but get in your pants to get a sustainable rugby competition. But none of this is beyond the reach of any other major rugby nation. They've created a nation full of passionate rugby dreamers. And even if their club never makes it in the top 14, there's pride knowing that every contribution has helped with forming their domestic league, shaping one of the best national sides in the world and dominating at age group levels. I'm really keen to hear your thoughts on your domestic league, wherever you're based around the world, and leave it down in the comments. I'll be sure to read it. Thanks for watching. Yeah.